The following program is an original MCM production for Community Channel 14. Welcome to Taste the Season. I'm Lisa Kingery, registered dietitian and culinary educator for the Fondy Farmers Market. And I'm doing Taste the Season today with an all-time summertime favorite, gazpacho. And gazpacho is um, a wonderful way for you to use everything that has come into season right at the peak of season, so sometime in August. And in August, tomatoes come in season. Now, gazpacho is an old recipe. It's from Spain. It dates back to before Columbus came to the New World. And even before that time, and before tomatoes were in Spain, they were making gazpacho in Spain. So I don't know what that tasted like. It's a totally different thing. But now gazpacho seems to universally have tomatoes. And that seems to be the only ingredient that you have to have. Tomatoes, well, salt, pepper, olive oil, and vinegar, and that's it. And then you can add anything else you want. So what I've got here is, let's go over the ingredients. I've got about two pounds of tomatoes. I've got a pound of cucumbers. I like to use these little Kirby's, you know, the little tiny pickling cucumbers. And the reason I like to use them is because they have less water in them. And I don't like my gazpacho to be too watery. And so that's why I use these. And they're in season right now, so why not? Um, then I use an onion, a small onion or a half an onion if you don't want it to be too oniony. I use one clove of garlic, one clove of garlic only because we're going to be eating it raw, we're going to mince up the garlic and the more it's minced and tinier it is, the more powerful garlic becomes. So unless you like things really garlicky, just add one clove. Um, and then I'm going to add about a quarter cup of herbs and I just have a mix of herbs but if you like one particular herb like parsley, so be it, just be it parsley. I myself have parsley, I've got basil, I've got tarragon which adds an interesting kind of licorice-y thing to it. Um, I've got a little bit of oregano here and I've got chives. So I'm going to throw a little bit of all that in there. I also have about three slices of stale bread and then I've got my red wine vinegar you can use white wine vinegar or another rice wine vinegar if you want. I've tried using balsamic vinegar. It's got that brown taste. It's got that brown color, I mean. And it turns it a little bit browner. It still tastes good because balsamic vinegar is good, but I'm going to do red wine today. And then I've got extra virgin olive oil. So you want to use a really nice olive oil that tastes good to you because, well, we're not cooking anything and it's going to be a very much a part of what we're eating. So here we go. The first thing we do is we're going to prep all of the ingredients and I'm going to start with the tomatoes. These tomatoes are uber ripe, very very ripe. I got them at a discount from my farmer and I'm always doing this kind of thing like give me the the most ripe tomato and they give me a little bit of a discount because I don't care that it's got this thing here and I don't care it's got a little soft spot because I'm going to puree the thing so what does it matter to me? So here I go. I'm going to take the core out. It's a big knife for the core but I can do it. It's a crazy tomato too. It's about a pound and a half itself. And then I'm going to take this little bottom part off because it's icky. I'm going to get a little, here, I'll use this. this is my, I'm going to get that part out too. Here. Uh, all right. Then I'm going to slice this big guy in half. And I'm going to, wow, I'm going to, ooh, it's, it's really just delicious looking to me. It, smell, it smells like a tomato. I love those homegrown, farm-grown tomatoes. I'm getting the seeds out. Let me see if you can see that. All I do is squeeze it, and I take my other finger, and I just get them out. And the reason I'm getting them out, and you can save the seeds. You can save this liquid and then kind of put it through a cheesecloth and then drink the juice. I would do that today if I was not. Ooh, that squirted everywhere. Maybe I'll do that later. Anyway, so this is a way to get the seeds out. And I want to do that, and some people don't. Some people just throw the whole darn tomato in there because, again, I don't, I don't want the seeds in there, and I don't want it to be sloppy, but you can easily throw it in there. Other recipes have it in there. I just don't. So, all right. And then this guy's got to fit in my food processor. So... I'm going to kind of just keep 
cut them like this. Throw them in there. All right. Next, we're moving on to the cucumbers. And again, it's a pound of cucumbers. And some people like to leave the skin on. I do not. So I'm going to cut off both ends. And I'm going to whoop, peel them. Okay, so now after I've peeled everything, I'm going to take them and cut off their little ends. I'm going to take them and slice them down the middle, and I'm going to take out the seeds. You don't have to. I'm just being pretty meticulous about not having seeds in there. The seeds just have a lot of water in them, too. So I don't like to have them in there. So it's getting pretty full. I think I'm going to have to take this for a run. onion just a little bit. You know what I should have done? I should have done it at the very beginning. All right. Let's try half and well. Should we try half? Let's do the whole thing. All right. Whole thing because it's small. Now what, if you don't, what do you do if you don't have a food processor? Well, if you have a blender, you could do it in a blender, and that would be perfectly fine. Um, now let's say you don't have a blender either. Um, you could just chop it up into tiny, tiny bits. I saw many recipes like that where they chopped it into tiny bits. And um, that's how they used to make long ago when they were making gazpacho pre-1492. They were not chopping things up with a food processor, they were chopping things up with their knife. So you could just do it the old, old fashioned way, right? Um, there's that. And now I want to add my one clove of garlic. So this is hard neck garlic. It's very different than what you get at the grocery store. And it's hard to get open. That's why it's called hard neck. All right. It's kind of a little disaster down there, but that's okay. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to be kind of conscientious about mincing this up because I really don't want, I want garlic to be everywhere in there, and I just don't want anyone to get one huge hunk of garlic in their gazpacho because that would not be delicious at all. So, so I want to be careful about the garlic, so I am going to mince it up. nice and tidy. Um, oh, I need to put in my bread now, but what I think I'm going to do, put it in there. One, two, there we go. You can use stale bread. I don't have any stale bread on hand. I toasted it. A bit of toasty flavor, but stale bread is what you normally would look for. And then I got to get my herbs ready. So here are some basil. Here's my parsley. Okay. And this is Italian flat leaf parsley. It's got a nice fresh flavor. Um, here is my oregano. 
spray is kind of powerful. Won't use too much of that. Um, the tarragon, which again has that um, anise licorice sort of flavor to it. So I'll add some to there. And you could add more if you wanted to, or more herbs if you want to. Um, all right, now I've got this whole little, and I'm not going to be too concerned about it because we are going to throw it in that food processor, so, so we don't have to worry about it being perfectly minced up. All right, that's about a quarter cup. It's very imprecise. Let's this guy up again. In you go. Little herbs, in you go. All right. And let's run it again. Now, the last and final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add two tablespoons of red vinegar. One, two. Some people like to put lemon juice. I'm using red wine vinegar. I'm going to put about a quarter cup of olive oil in there. And I could be doing this while it was running, but then you wouldn't be able to hear me. So here's olive oil. And then I'm going to add some salt, one, two, three, four. I got kosher salt. And then I'm gonna add, I don't know if I'll be able to get that in there. Oh, I can, there we go, there we go. I got some pepper. Some people like to add hot peppers or Tabasco to the, to the mix. I don't. Or I'd be the only one eating it. All right, here we go. Last time. I just made a mess there. One minute and 30 minutes. I'm going to say it needs a little bit more salt. My dad always says you can add more, but you can't take it away. So be cautious in starting. I'm also going to put a little bit more olive oil in it. OK. One last whirl. And there, we have perfect, wonderful gazpacho. So there you have it. That's a gazpacho, and we're ready to go. All right, put that aside. Voila. And now what you can do is you can serve it immediately as a soup with a spoon and the whole nine yards, or you can put it in a glass. Some people do that and drink it. And what I like to do is make extra so that I can save it in these little um, freezer safe containers. I label it and, and then when it's time for me to decide what to eat for lunch and there's nothing in my refrigerator, I can say, ah, I have gazpacho from the middle of August. Let me go down there and eat that. Now I have my wonderful lunch without even doing anything. So there's that. We can put a little, well, you know, I forgot to put the chive in there, but that's all right. Here, we'll put a pretty garnish. I never do garnishes, but here. Ta-da. <laughs> so, I want to thank you for coming to Taste the Season, where we try to show you how to cook the best tasting, locally grown seasonal vegetables in all of Southeast Wisconsin. You should come down to the Fondy Farmer's Market where you can get all of the things that I just showed you, and then some. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Taste the Season. Thank you.
This has been an MCM Productions program.